MTD CNC are in Leighton Buzzard today. We're at RST Engineering. Now, at the bottom of your screens at the moment, you're going to see this rather tasty looking component here, which has been machined on this new Herco VMX 60 SR Ti. Now, I'm with Paul, who's one of the directors. We're going to come back and talk about this part in a little bit more detail in a minute, so don't, uh, don't go anywhere. Paul, uh, thanks for the invitation today. Firstly, I've got to congratulate you on your attire. Where, where'd you get your shirts from? They're just like ours. I think you copied us, sir. <laughs> you were first, were you? Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about the company um, and when it was founded and, and what your sort of specialist skills are. Well, we started off in 1986, which was found by my late father, predominantly doing EDM specialist. Uh, we moved into CNC milling in the late 90s with uh, Herco, and that started our relationship with Herco. And, and now, I mean, what's the split now when you look at your EDM to your milling? Are you kind of 50-50? Yeah, it's 50-50. Yeah, I'd say 50-50. And your position here as director, you're, you're predominantly on the milling side then, aren't you? Yeah, I'm head of the milling department. So it's your neck that's on the line when you buy machines like this and when you cost jobs and making sure you get them out the door. Is that a fair assumption? Yeah, when there's a big buy like this, my head was firmly on the block. So. And it's still, on your, it's still on your shoulders, so you must have made a good decision. I think I'm winning the other directors over. <laughs> now, let's talk about this machine, because we see a lot of Herco machines in the field. We see a lot of their small uh, VM, in from the VM5 machines up to the, the big VM machines. But this is actually a 60 with the, with the five-axis uh, capability, isn't it? Why did you go for something this big? Well, the actual versatility was one of the main things. The size of one and a half metres by 660 as a three-axis machine stood out alone. So do you use it for that as well then, even though you have got this five axis capability, are you sometimes using it just as a straightforward three axis machine? Yeah, we flip between the two, five axis and three axis all the time. And I know that you've got your VMX30 UI as well, which is a, is a five axis machine, it's smaller and it's a different style of five axis machine. Do, it, what are the differences with having a machine configured like this? And do you think, you know, wh which one's better or is it totally application driven? It depends on the job. There's a lot of flexibility in the size of the component on here. Uh, rather than the 30U, you are restricted on the size of the component to a certain degree. And what sort of work would you be doing? I know we've got these parts here, and I'm going to pick this up in a minute and have a look at it. But as a company, where do you, where do you, where's your specialist subjects? We actually specialise in the communication area and a lot of Formula One and medical. And what do you do if you're quite short when you're trying to operate a machine like this you need a big duckboard don't you you're lucky to be tall yeah we got one small guy that struggles a little bit but he don't go on that much and on the control side of things when you are using this machine uh, we, we always talk to a lot of Herco customers that, that love their control now you have mentioned to me already you do quite a bit of offline programming but you do a lot of your 2d stuff here at the control don't you yeah the actual program in the machine at the control is superb it lets the guys get on and freeze me up on the CAD side. And have you found the new control, the Max 5, even better than the, the previous one? Because you've got that on here, you've got the double screen. Yeah, the size of the screen's great, especially for my eyes nowadays, but it's uh, a great machine to operate. And, and with that screen, it's, it's, they're win are they Windows-based as well? So you can go in, does that give you a lot, more, uh, a lot more scope for what you're doing? Is it more powerful? Yeah, very, very powerful. Now this part here, we've got three parts here, Paul. Let's start with this big one here. Tell us about what your, uh, or what the specifics are on this and what you're trying to achieve tolerance-wise and how long it takes you to make. The main, the main importance on the big plate was the flatness and the, uh, the pockets were tied up. What, what would they be tied up to? Plus or minus 10 microns. That's oh, so pretty tight as well then. And what about the flatness then? What, what's the, uh, what's the, what are you trying to achieve with that? The flatness had to be within 30. So how would you go about doing that? I mean, I mean, you're getting close to kind of ground finishes there or, or ground dimensions. Can you do that on this machine? And if so, how do you go about doing it? That component was roughed out a mil bigger. And after we roughed it out, we then worked on getting the flatness spot on. So then you kind of did it, you kind of, do you, re, you don't refix it, but just release the clamp then back down again and then do your finishing cut? Let, let it rest in its natural position to get the flatness and then carry on with the rest of the machine in. And, and on the detail of the machine, the head here, what, what does that tip and which way does it tip and how, how many, what's the angular degrees? 92 degrees both ways. Uh, it tips both ways? Yeah. Yep. And then your C axis on the table here, I mean that's a, that's a 360, correct? That's correct. 
And, and does that does that sit uh, above the fixed table, or is it is it? I'm assuming it's underneath it, isn't it? So you can put those larger parts. Uh, we've got ours flush. Oh, is that is that an yeah. option when you buy the machine? You can select where the whereabouts you want the position. Yeah, you can have it where you want it. We, we decided to have it flush for our free axis work. And are you running on a BT40 spindle here? Yes. With the amount, how many tools would this carousel have? Because it kind of sits in a in a different format to some other machines, doesn't it? Yeah, we've got 40 tools in this carousel. In summary then, Paul, how do you find the support from Herco as well? I mean, no, no machine tool is ever without a problem. Do they help when you need it? Yeah, on the over the telephone, the help is great and it's very good service coming out to sort the machine out if we have a breakdown at all. So when, when you take RST and Herco, both two companies that have grown significantly over recent years, kind of have they helped you grow and vice versa? Would that be a good assumption? Yeah, it's fair to say over the last 10, 15 years, RST has grown steadily and Herco have been a part of that.